Hey everybody, I'm Cliff, N4CCB. Today we're going to talk about FT8. Now FT8 is super easy to use, and if you ever watched my video getting started with digital modes, you've already got all the hardware and everything in place, you know, the same hardware you use for RIDI or JT65 or PSK31, that's all the same for every digital mode. So you've got everything you need already for FT8, except for the software. Um, before we jump into that though, uh, I'm using a different antenna today. In my last video, I showed you uh, contact from, with Easter Island. I was using a random wire 26-foot uh, antenna with a couple of 16-foot radials. Uh, today, I've got a soda beams linked dipole, and I'm using the 20-meter segment of that. Uh, and the way I deployed that was I took the wire in the center of the coax, the, the radiating part, and uh, ran that up my travel mast, and I took the shield or the ground side of the dipole and just ran it across the balcony. So I've got a pretty good antenna. And I knew I was going to make some contacts. And with FT8, you can make a lot of contacts. It's a fantastic weak signal mode for QRP guys. So uh, it's something worth knowing. That said, FT8 is not for everybody. It's not a conversational mode. Uh, the software generates a sequence of uh, you know, canned messages. But you do exchange call signs, grid squares, uh, and the signal report. So, it's got everything that a quick, you know, 5-9 uh, thank you, you know, DX contact has. Um, it just might not be satisfying to some people. Some people may, like I, I love CW, so I like CW better. But uh, for a situation where you aren't using a lot of power, where maybe you've got a compromised antenna, um, it's a great mode. And I think uh, you're going to see more and more people using that over the other digital modes. If you want to have a, a rag chew, PSK31 is still great, RIDI is still great, but if you just want to make some, some DX contacts with low power, FT8 is where it's at right now. So um, let's go get the software. All right, so what we're looking for is WSJTX, and there it is right there. This is the official web page for this software. Uh, this is another Joe Taylor creation. Here's where you go get the software. And the latest full release, I'm using the version 1.8. So uh, you just click that to download it on Windows. They've got, you know, a version for OS 10 and for different, you know, distros of Linux. So anyway, this is where you go get it and it installs just like any other Windows application. And now we are going to launch it. Okay. Now, we're going to go up to the file menu. I've got, I've got two windows open as you can see right now. One on the left is the waterfall view. Uh, the one on the right is where all the action is. I'm going to go to file settings and here on the general tab you're going to put in your call sign and your grid square. You're going to want to check these top three check boxes for display and then you're going to want to make sure this check box the double click on call sets TX enable. Make sure that's checked. That lets you just click on somebody calling CQ and start the conversation with them. Um, Rig control, if you want the radio to be automatically you know, switched to bands and the right frequencies and stuff, you can set that up. I don't even bother with that. Uh, for audio, I've got a signal link, so I'm using this USB audio codec driver for my signal link. And that's absolutely everything you have to configure. That's all there is to it. So let's talk about this screen for a second. Um, this left-hand panel is showing you every 15 seconds everything that's been decoded. So the way FT8 works is you're either transmitting or you're listening every 15 seconds. And all of our computer clocks are synced so that we all start at the right time and stop at the right time. And to have a QSO, all you have to do is double click on one of these green lines where somebody's calling CQ. And the software will automatically create the right response. Now I'm going to put up on the screen here the, the, the way a, a QSO works. So for the standard exchange with FT8, 
A station calls CQ and gives their call sign and their grid square. If you're interested in talking to that station, you double click on that line uh, in the left hand panel here, the band activity screen, and it automatically generates a packet for you to send which has his call sign and then your call sign followed by your grid square. If he hears that, then his software will send you his, uh, your signal report, excuse me, <laughs> your call sign, his call sign, and then your signal report. In other words, how well he's, his system is hearing you. Your software will automatically send him his call sign, your call sign, and then the signal report for him, how well you're hearing him. At that point, his software will send you three R's, Roger, to acknowledge that he got your report. Your software will send 73. And his may send 73 at the end of that, too. Um, and that's it. It's that simple. Now, it's not a rag chewing mode, obviously. It's just the basics, right? But it's pretty fast paced compared to JT65. You know, JT65 had like 48 seconds of transmission and 12 seconds of decoding. This is like every 15 seconds, which feels like it's fast paced compared to JT65. Um, so that's really all you need to know. This, this auto sequence checkbox, by the way, is set by default. Um, if, you, if you leave that set up, then it'll, the software will automatically send the, the packets in the correct order for you. So just leave that checked. And that's really all I want to tell you about this because that's all you have to know to be able to use this software. Now, we're going to go back and look at some screen captures I did earlier when I worked a couple of stations. So here comes that. Okay, so I was trying to work this, this station and he wasn't hearing me. He kept calling CQ and I kept transmitting um, and nothing was happening. But remember, stations are that can see me are seeing me being decoded every 15 seconds. And so there was a station who saw my call sign and double clicked on me. And by him double clicking on me, boom, we get a QSO. So he's calling me. And it's this station in Greece, which is over 5,000 miles away from here. And we're exchanging the packets, like I told you a while ago. Every 15 seconds, you know, either he's transmitting or I'm transmitting. He's listening or I'm listening. And we go through a minute and a half to get this QSO done. JT65 takes about five minutes. This takes a minute and a half, which seems like a long time to just transmit call sign, grid square, and signal report. But remember, this is a weak signal mode. And so it takes a little bit of time to be able to dig that information out. That's why it takes 15 seconds to send this so it can handle noisy conditions or weak signals. Okay, so now we've both said 73 to each other. The contact is officially over, and I can log this. Now, seeing his call sign, I wanted to go look him up on QRZ. I didn't have my iPad open or anything to look him up, but I knew he was in Greece from his call sign. So I'm going to go up here to QRZ. I'm going to type in his call, SV1AZL. And uh, here he is. This is Bill in Greece. And if you look at the detail pane, you can see it's 5,365 miles from here. Let's go see where Bill lives, assuming that his uh, information is correct. Oh man, he lives in a beautiful port city, it looks like, near Athens. 
and uh, I'm still over here in the Caribbean, uh, just east of St. Thomas, which is just east of Puerto Rico. So that was a nice contact. And uh, now I'm going to show you another contact that I had with a guy in France. Okay, so I'm sitting here looking at the CQs and I see this guy with a, a French call sign. So I double click that, which causes the software to send a packet with, you know, me uh, saying his call sign and then my call sign so he knows I'm calling him. So his station is listening. He just called CQ and I'm transmitting my call sign. And so I'm waiting for the 15 seconds to elapse so I can get a decode to find out what's going on. Okay, well he's still calling CQ. So my software automatically tries again. He didn't catch me that last pass, so maybe he'll catch me this time. So hopefully when we decode he heard me and he responds to me. Aha, he's got me. So he sends me my call sign, so I know he's talking to me, his call sign, and then a minus 14 dB. So that's my signal strength to him, which is not super loud by any means, but, but you know, good enough. Here we are. So I decode that from him, and now I'm sending him back his signal report, which, you know, is minus 0.7 dB, so stronger than mine. And he receives that, and after 15 seconds, he transmits to me. And he acknowledges our contact, and I send 73, and then his software will automatically send me the final packet, which has the, you know, 73 there. And as soon as I decode that, then the contact is officially over. And there it is. Okay, so there you go. Two contacts, one from Greece, one from France. Let's look this guy up real quick. I'll go to QRZ and look him up. So for the sake of time, I went ahead and pulled this up so you can see it. This is Claude and a picture of him and his nice antenna, which makes QRP possible. Uh, or, or more likely, anyway. But uh, anyway, so there's this station in France. Let's go see where he lives. Go to the details pane. He is 4,060 miles away. And if we go look at the map here, we'll scroll out a little bit, see where he lives. Okay, so not too far from the ocean on the coast of uh, west coast of France. Um, and I'm still in the ocean myself, so. Uh, anyway, that's it. So, to wrap this video up, I've showed you how, how super easy it is to, to, to get FTA configured and how easy the software makes it to just generate. All you have to do is you know, double click on a station calling CQ. The computer does the rest. Uh, you have to decide if, if you're okay with that. You know, I think it's pretty cool but I'm a nerd, and uh, I still like CW better, uh, but for weak signal mode or making a lot of contacts you know, faster than you would normally uh, call in CQ, uh, because so many people are using this now. It's really amazing how many people are using this. Uh, it's actually kind of sad in a way because like, I'm scanning the bands, listening for people doing Morse code, and I see tons of people out here doing FT8 now. Uh, so I'm a little concerned about where this is going because it's, uh, it's so automated that it just kind of feels funny, you know. But anyway, uh, that's it. I hope this has helped you uh, get, your, get your feet wet with FT8. And um, I guess that's it for this one. Talk to you guys later.